was just a busy Oh, this is the original, I think. The sample of what they used for I Love the Way. Freckly. No, but she's big eyes. Yeah, this is a sample. This ain't Ari. Yeah, it's a sample. You no, but she says Ari. Yeah. Wait, what did you just say? He said we just got thrown soft. Maybe you should use don't, your card. Don't go. If you know what I'm talking about. You can't do it in restaurants. Don't go to the one on the south side. The one on Cable Street is so good, but it sounds really cool. Well, look how nice. It looks so gorgeous and sunny outside. We literally were only here for like half an hour. There's like a water fountain thing over there. It's so stunning. Gorgina. So now, we're gonna go home and we're gonna watch our show. Okay. We were gonna get one each for the special occasion, but we decided against it. It wasn't as clear through. Yeah. Or maybe one next week. Or this or, week. Sorry, or tomorrow. Later. So, I need to be brief because um, Grace is going to be on her way up for us to watch something soon. But I have a few things I have written down in my notes that I just want to quickly touch on. I was watching. Um, a YouTuber that I used to love and then I stopped watching and then today I just started watching her again because the title of her video kind of spoke to me but it, the YouTuber is Leah's Field Notes and the video is about like being aware of your self doubt and stuff along those lines and there were a few things she spoke about she spoke about that really stood out to me and she was kind of talking more in the sense of exterior triggers like things she was worried about that she was doing that could affect other people but the way I was taking it was more how I've been treating myself and how I can be more conscious of my thought cycles so let me just explain and um, she spoke about that really I don't know it just really stuck with me like as I was listening to her talk about it, I was like I've never heard it phrased in this way and you know sometimes I used to get this sometimes in therapy which would be so satisfying where hearing something rephrased by someone from like a very outside perspective whether it be someone you don't know on YouTube or a therapist who might not know you that well yet and it's like a bystander it's like not you know biased in any way hearing it phrased in a way that like it's as if it's your first time ever hearing it, even though like it does make sense. So basically, um, I don't know why the camera starts flashing like that sometimes. I don't know why. Anyway, so I've written down, triggers are reminders of wounds that are not yet healed. And if you're being triggered by something, it means it's a gentle reminder of work that has to be done in order to eliminate the trigger. So she was saying it in like kind of an outsider way of people that might be making comments about her or judging her or, you know, like I was saying, external things that are affecting her. She's viewing those people who are getting triggered by her as people who are not yet healed from their own issues, which like obviously in different wording I knew that was to be true of like you know people who are mean to you are just jealous or they're only hung up about something because maybe it's they're seeing themselves in you and they don't like it she was saying it in that kind of way like talking about other people but I took that in reference to myself of Things that are coming up as triggers. What's the word? It's like very relevant in my day to day life recently of like getting triggered by stuff. 
because as I've said before a lot of my anxiety comes from associations of things which is a very um, autistic way of looking at things and that's something I really struggle with which I feel like I always am talking about but it's basically like associations through places, people, clothes, smells, songs, stuff like that which can bring back negative emotions or memories of hard times and getting very triggered by the whole thing and I'm sure people experience that to some extent but I think in an autistic way it can be a lot more overwhelming because obviously I get overstimulated by my senses as I have like a lower threshold for stuff or at least I did before I was on medication and it still can be a bit iffy but I'm rambling now. Reference to what I just said triggers are reminders of wounds that are not yet healed so I'm taking that as the things I'm getting triggered by recently Obviously I'm viewing it in an upsetting way because I don't want to be triggered, I don't want to be reminded, I don't want to be anxious or upset over these things when they should be in the past. But, like I said, it's like a gentle reminder of these things are not fully healed and it's like putting salt in a wound and you shouldn't feel negative triggers if you're over it. So I guess it's just a way of your body telling you that you've more work to be putting into it. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but it made a lot of sense when I was thinking about it. Why? I don't know. Is it recording? Things keep popping up. I, I will get into that more, but I feel like I'm just not making sense. So the next thing I've written down is a quote that her friend told her in the video. And she was like so blown away by it. And therefore, as I was listening to it, I was like that is so like revolutionary although again like it is kind of just something everyone knows phrased slightly differently so for some reason it did stick out to me but maybe to some of you it won't seem that crazy but anyway it's recognizing self-doubt is self-awareness and realizing self-doubt is self-harm and my perception of it from what she was explaining is slightly different i guess but it's roughly like so recognising self-doubt, which could be, I don't know, recognising and acknowledging you're in like a bad period or like certain things are affecting you or you're doubtful about certain things. Recognising that is being self-aware and it's like putting yourself first and making conscious decisions to work on it, I guess. Whereas realising you've self-doubt self-harm because realizing doesn't always follow with positive actions if you know what I mean like you could realize you're anxious and then do nothing about it and just sit with that feeling or you could realize you're worried about something and again just dismiss it or put it on the back of your mind or try sweep under the rug until it gets worse and worse so in that way it's harmful to yourself because it's not action based whereas it can what's it what was the first word i said recognizing self-doubt is you're recognizing it in like a productive way i guess I like recognising the signs of you getting bad and needing to work on it. Yeah. And then the final thing I'd written down from that video that stuck with me was that, again, something I knew but I just needed to be reminded of. And it's really satisfying when stuff like that happens because you know when like you're telling yourself like affirmations or you're looking at like quotes like inspirational or motivational quotes and like your brain kind of like dulls them down or something because you're so used to seeing stuff like that that it loses its meaning like don't give up or what doesn't kill you makes you stronger do you know like if somebody told you that you'd be like yeah okay whatever 
but when it's phrased in a slightly different way with the same message, it can be like, whoa, like, just opening your eyes. So anyway, sitting in fear will only make it stronger. If you can make any step, no matter how small you think it is, the fear will shrink over time without you even realising. And this is something, like, I kind of struggle with because I'll go through phases where sometimes if it's kind of a low severity, severity, anxiousness I'm going through, I can recognise the signs of it getting bad or the signs that I'm not being as mentally productive as I usually am to like keep my body and my emotions regulated, my emotions regulated, and I can then be productive and start working on the steps. Whereas in other anxious phases, like I've been in the past week or so, see, like I can acknowledge what steps I know I need to do to make progress of getting back to how I was when I was normal. But it's so daunting that like, the way my brain views it is that like these small steps will not get me anywhere like I need something drastic to fix me where as in reality that is never ever ever the case like you need to go to therapy and like do these constant coping skills to like stay on track over a long period of time you can't just have a quick fix obviously I'm in this kind of phase it can be easy to settle into a depressed thinking pattern that things will never get better no matter how hard I try nothing's gonna change and I'm gonna be stuck like this forever and yada 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 I'm trying to keep things upbeat so seeing this quote which is basically like keep going in a long-winded way it just stuck with me because it was just a nice reminder that The steps I am making, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment, they are of course making things easier. And I was watching a movie the other day, it was like, it wasn't an apocalypse movie, but it was like a kind of world disaster kind of movie. And the main character was a dad and he was trying to get his family out of this like drastic circumstance. and every time they came to a new obstacle obviously the family was overwhelmed and everyone was overwhelmed they didn't know what to do he would say we just need to be 10 steps ahead of them like just 10 more steps and that gave them like reassurance that okay we don't have to do this huge journey we just have to do the next 10 steps and when that was done another 10 steps you know and it's also like i used to watch the unbreakable kimmy schmidt which is like a fever dream show to be honest because I watched it when I was like 13 and it was it was just a wild show I don't know if anyone else watched it but it's about this girl who lived in like this bunker and she was like Amish and I think they thought the world was gonna end or something so she was like in this bunker for years and then one day they got freed but before they got freed she had to do like all these kind of crazy tasks oh and one of them was like turning this big wheel for water or electricity or something, I don't know what it was. And she would say that it was so painful, like doing it, it was so heavy. And that she'd be like, okay, you can do anything for five seconds. So she would count to five and like by four and then five, she was like really sore. And then she'd be like, but I've done five seconds. And then she'd be like, okay, another five seconds. and you know so at the time when I was watching that show I was also in a very bad situation and not situation like a bad period um, and I remember one of the things I had a lot of anxiety over which I can't even explain like it's it's like a whole anxiety lore about me of like why certain physical things made me so anxious which I'm sure is linked to sensory overload and sensory issues I have but 
basically one of the things at the time that I really could not stand doing and made me so anxious was we were going to mass pretty regularly at that time and when you have to stand up like 50 million times during the mass when like they're saying a certain prayer or whatever for some reason standing in those little pews and like the sitting up and down up and down and like you got such dirty looks if you didn't stand up obviously and for whatever reason I the I just hated the standing up part and it was around the time I was watching that show and I was like okay I can do anything for five seconds though so I would just keep counting to five over and over and over again in my head and it actually did kind of help so again that's a very long winded way of explaining how this thing she was talking about in the video stuck out to me which is your fear gets stronger the more you sit in it and any step you make no matter how small it is is progressing you forward and I woke up this morning deciding that this is going to be the first day where I'm back to normal because I've just had such a hard horrible go at it uh, the past few weeks and I don't want to be too hard on myself in case it's an autistic shutdown in which case I would have to change my mindset about it but I'm viewing it in a more anxiety related way where I need to kind of give myself tough love and not let myself get so comfortable in being sad and anxious and obviously that's a lot easier said than done but I was watching back on some of my old YouTube videos for like comfort that I have been happy and normal so recently but in one from a few months ago yeah, give me five more minutes! Go Two! And in the video, sometimes I would be going through a bad period that would only last like a week or something, but I'd get so comfortable in that feeling of being sad and hopeless, and I'd have to like give myself a cop on kind of talk. And obviously, this is more of a dire situation, and I can't give myself like a cop on and then get over it straight away. Talk. But at the same time, I cannot just let myself sit and overthink and cry and panic and dread any longer because it is just horrible. So even though it's easier said than done, I'm really just gonna fucking do everything in my power to cut off the negative thoughts straight away. Like just not let my mind wander and if that means I need to be distracted 24 7 so be it like I'd rather be reading fucking 24 7 or have my earphones in or being busy than sitting and wallowing so yeah I'm from today onwards viewing things in a much more hopeful way and I will be making my small steps no matter how small and hopefully start feeling better very soon. Logic behind like manifesting and affirmations and scripting or visualizing or whatever. It can be kind of a, like it's a fine line sometimes because I like the idea of all those things but then if you're in an anxious mindset those things can be like jinxed or viewed in a really negative way because I, I want to do like the affirmation of I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna be okay but then in the back of my head I'm like if I keep saying I'm going to be okay then I'm only affirming that I will be okay in the future I'm not manifesting that for right now so then I have to keep repeating I am okay I am okay I am okay and then like you know sometimes it's just not nice to have that voice in your head that's telling you like you're doing it wrong or like yesterday on the bus I'd be like okay if I see two more blue cars side by side that means I'm gonna have a good day and then if I don't see it I'm like oh my god I'm gonna have the worst day ever like it's nice when you see signs but when you put too much emphasis and load on them to the point where it's gonna wreck your day if those things don't come true it's not worth it so okay it's half nine and Grace is waiting for us to watch a movie so I'm gonna do that now but that is my two cents and I think I'd kind of like gotten off of YouTube posts recently like 
obviously like there's a handful of YouTubers I watch religiously and like once a week when they post their videos I'll like sit down and watch them but I have loads of subscriptions to pages like that girl who do a lot of like um I don't know like self actualization kind of videos and you have to be in a very specific mood if you want to actually like absorb the information but I really am today I'm gonna try to stay on that buzz because it really kept me in a positive outlook for the day and now I hope maybe I'm spreading on some of that positivity to you thanks for listening <laughs>